Let me tell you a little story. When I first got to university as a fresh-faced sports science junior student, I was dealing with a lot of mental health stuff. I had some depression going on, some insomnia, some anxiety, and some more. I had been training consistently for a few years at that point, since I was about 14 years old. However, alongside all the mental health stuff, somewhere along the way, training had become a little bit less enjoyable. Due to the mental health and stuff, I eventually found it quite challenging to be able to plan out my own training and continue sticking to it. You know, there would be some days where I wouldn't want to train. There would be some days where it'd be difficult to get the session done as it was prescribed. And so eventually, it became more and more difficult to both write out training programs and to follow them closely. Since I could no longer closely follow a regimented routine, reluctantly, because I still wanted to make gains, I started freestyling my own training a little bit more, you know, going into the gym and being a bit more flexible with, oh, what exercise am I gonna do? Oh, what rep range am I gonna hit? That sort of stuff. Around this time, I'd been reading some of Manuel Hanselman's and Borg Fagerly's stuff around full body training. Specifically, Borg advocated for a super simple approach to training where you picked one pushing exercise, one pulling exercise, one knee dominant exercise, one hip hinge dominant exercise, and then afterwards, you could do some sort of isolation work, or you could pick a carry, or you could just call it there. So a very simple, bare-boned approach. For about six months, I followed this very sort of freestyle, simple, bare-boned approach and made some pretty good gains. I gained a good amount of muscle and strength. As another good example, my good friend Dr. Pack has been doing this for about one or two years now and has made some really solid gains on the overhead press in terms of overall muscle mass, hit some deadlift PRs and more. Now, does this make for the absolute best muscle gaining strategy? No, but I do think there is a time and place for not having a super prescriptive training program all the time. Measure what is measurable and make measurable what isn't has become near dogma within the fitness space. However, what evidence do we actually have for saying that a meticulously planned approach will result in far better gains compared to a somewhat more loose approach that still follows a few good guidelines? The most obvious area of evidence here would be periodization which refers to the manipulation of training variables over time, which requires planning. This is where the latest meta-analysis by Moose Garden colleagues comes in. When looking at a total of 35 studies, the following trends emerged. First, for one repetition maximum strength, periodization was better than no periodization. For muscle growth, however, periodization did not lead to better results than not periodizing your training. Finally, a subgroup analysis suggested that undulating periodization was better than linear periodization for one repetition maximum strength. No such results were found for growth. So for strength, there does appear to be a benefit to changing training variables over time, but for hypertrophy, there wasn't. Importantly, in my view, this doesn't support super strong support in favor of strictly planning sessions. After all, no periodization in the training research means literally doing the exact same session over and over again the same intensity, the same number of sets, the same exercises, the same number of reps. So no periodization is actually not a very good training approach, especially when you're training a performance outcome at the end, which you might want to peak and taper for. But that doesn't mean that you need to plan your training super rigidly. In fact, if you go into the gym day to day with an open mind, you'll typically wind up adopting a form of undulating or daily undulating periodization anyways, where you kind of change things a little bit day to day based on your readiness, based on your soreness, based on your motivation and that sort of stuff. So if you're currently not super strictly planning your sessions, you shouldn't be worrying too much. Here's a few recommendations and takeaways from this video. First, if you're going with this approach as a short-term strategy, don't worry too much about having super strict guidelines in place. As long as you're doing things roughly right, training somewhat hard, using some of the same exercises session to session, training in a relatively productive rep range. If it's a short-term strategy, you don't need to worry too much about optimizing or having a lot of guidelines to go by. You can go relatively freestyle, and still make some pretty solid gains. That being said, if you're using this as a longer term strategy, say more than about a month, and or you still want really good gains, here's a few things to check off. First, I'd recommend training each muscle group at least twice a week. And I would generally take most sets for hypertrophy within about two reps of failure. Do about two to four sets per exercise on average. As far as rep ranges go, you can go anywhere between five and 50 reps 
provided you actually train close enough to failure. Finally, it is probably worth including some exercise variation, aka not just doing chin-ups every single time you hit back. For certain complex muscle groups, like for example the back, that probably benefits from a variety of pulling angles. Here's a very quick example of a full body split for muscle growth. For strength, I would recommend frequencies of once to three times a week for the squat, twice to five times a week for the bench, and finally, once or twice a week for the deadlift. Most sets for strength should be within about seven reps of failure. I would do sets of anywhere between one and five reps on the main lifts, and sets of anywhere between three and 10 reps on accessories. On average, you should probably be doing about two to three sets per exercise. For strength especially, the degree of variation whether or not you want to include a lot of exercise variations versus just doing the main lifts that you care about is mostly up to you. Anyways, that's the video. If you're currently feeling stressed out with training or you're not even planning your training consistently, that's fine. A more loose and less rigidly and meticulously planned approach can still yield really solid gains. If you enjoy the video, please comment, like, subscribe. If you have any suggestions, leave them down below. And I'll see you guys, my subscribers, favorite people in the whole world, in that next one. Peace.